Hi everyone, it's Victoria Field, co-host of Metabolic Health Summit, and it is National Epilepsy Awareness Month, and I'm very excited to have Dr. Eric Kosoff in the room. We're going to be talking about epilepsy, how he got started. Uh, Dr. Eric Kosoff is one of the world's leading experts in ketogenic diet therapy for neurological disorders. He's at Johns Hopkins University. Dr. Kosoff, I'm so happy to have you here today. Thank you for joining me. Thanks, Victoria. It's uh, really nice to be here. And we're so thrilled to have you as a speaker at Metabolic Health Summit 2020 in January. You are doing, and have really been leading the charge when it comes to ketogenic diet therapies for children with epilepsy, as well as developing the modified Atkins diet in 2003, which I'd love to kind of dive into a little bit more about, making it really doable for people. But I want to take it back a little bit and talk about how this started for you, because I know you've been uh, a professor of neurology at Johns Hopkins and, and at that university since 1998, I believe, but it started most likely early on for you where you developed this passion. Right. So uh, again, thank you and, you know, happy, happy November, which is Epilepsy Awareness Month. And so great, great timing. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been a real interesting ride for me personally. It's been a real interesting ride for all of us in neurology. Uh, the ketogenic diet and diet therapies for epilepsy have come an incredibly long way. Yeah. Um, my personal interest started when I was a resident. Like many neurology residents, we had very little nutrition education. Um, we learned about seizure medicines. We learned about surgery. Um, those were sort of what we would do for all patients, whether they were new onset or whether they had tough to control seizures. Um, and as I was in my training, I was um, uh, fortunate enough to spend time with Dr. John Freeman um, and Dr. Patty Vining, who were real advocates for the ketogenic diet and had been using it at Hopkins, one of only a few places in the country using it for children for epilepsy. Uh -huh. And um, I'll you know, never forget, I was a brand new sort of neurology resident, probably about 23 years old, and I saw a child from the Midwest who did incredibly well with the diet, um, and it just sort of blew my mind. Um, I had heard of the diet, but never really seen it in action. And the concept that by just changing the food for a child over really only a few days, uh, you could make an incredible difference in their epilepsy. And in this case, you know, her seizures were cured, and never came back. And I was like, this is what I've got to keep working on. And so I was in the right place at the right time. As Dr. Freeman retired, I took over the keto program at Hopkins. Um, and it's, it's been incredible ever since. Um, we're using it now for infants which we never did before. Uh, we're using it now for adults with epilepsy. Um, and there's no reason why they couldn't do the diet before, but there just weren't people that interested. They thought it was only for kids. Right. Um, we're using it sooner and earlier in the course of epilepsies where it used to be only a last resort. Now, amazingly enough, we're even thinking of it first sometimes if they come in and you know what their epilepsy is. And there, there's some epilepsies that respond to the diet and some that don't but we can diagnose them quickly, some genetically, and say, you know what, I'm putting you on the diet because it's gonna work better than medicines. And so that time has really come. And then as you mentioned, we're really starting to use it for things other than epilepsy, which is really you know, not my expertise, but I'm, I'm glad to consult. And we have people in the stroke world, the MS world, autism, cancer, um, who come to us because we have such experience with using it for epilepsy and say, can you help us design trials and know how best to do the diet um, you know, for these conditions? And so we're learning a lot. Um, we're near the 100 year anniversary of ketogenic diets for epilepsy. It's um, pretty amazing to think about. That's um, really 1941 was when it started. Yeah, I mean, and you've been such a huge part of really pushing this movement forward with metabolic therapies when it comes to epilepsy. So much so, like we briefly talked about in developing the modified Atkins, right. diet, which I think is really interesting and key because you've really been able to show that this, in many cases, can be potentially just as effective as a classic right. ketogenic diet. If you want to explain where that came from for you, what, what was the need there, and what sure. you've seen since 2003. Yeah, you know, it was really parents, Victoria. It's always parents, you know, and, and your patients teach you more than sometimes you teach them. Right. Um, you know, for 90 years, the ketogenic diet for epilepsy was very traditional. Come into the hospital, a 24 to 48 hour fasting period, 
weighing, measuring, carefully calculating with a dietitian how to do it, um, frequent labs, frequent visits. And it was really about 2001 where parents who had been on the diet with their child for many years said, you know, maybe we don't need to be so strict. Maybe we can loosen up. You don't have to weigh and measure. You can keep an eye on carbs, yet push the fat and maintain ketosis. And so it was a lot of these parents that told us, maybe we're being stricter as doctors than we need to. And so when we looked at what a lot of these families were doing, it looked like the Atkins diet. It was probably a lower ratio ketogenic diet and it, they were successful. And we said, well, this is really interesting. If this works for children who've been on the diet for a while and are switching over, what about trying it first? Just trying an Atkins-like diet. And then about 2005, we decided to call it the modified Atkins diet, really to emphasize that we're doing this for epilepsy, that we're pushing fat. It's not sort of a high protein, high fat diet, but really a high fat, lower protein diet. Right. Um, and that really the goal is high ketosis and seizure control. And it's, you know, it's been about 20 years since we created it. And we use it a lot for teenagers. We use it a lot for adults, almost universally now for adults. Wow. There have been a lot of trials that show it works just as well as the ketogenic diet for epilepsy. So, Wow. That's, great. Yeah, that's pretty exciting because it makes it more doable, more accessible for Absolutely. some people. That I mean, that's, that's the goal of it, Victoria, is that you know, we want to make the diet more accessible to more patients. Mm -hmm. And if they perceive the ketogenic diet as being too tough, maybe this is a halfway point. And you can always switch between different diets, but at least it gets them thinking about it and it can get them started more quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a pretty incredible tool. And I mean, you've gone on to write a book about it, which you can find uh, yep. the ketogenic diet or the ketogenic and modified Atkins diets, treatments for epilepsy and other disorders. If you want to read that, you can actually find it on Amazon. So it's available yep. to everybody. And in your experience in seeing sort of this modified Atkins diet, this evolution of the ketogenic diet for epilepsy, what has that been like and, and what would you say to somebody who may be uh, experiencing seizures or has been struggling with epilepsy, maybe hasn't heard about the ketogenic diet as a possible tool. Um, maybe they're an adult or maybe it's a parent of a child that's, a, yeah. that's not really sure about it. Feels like, you know, they hear the buzzword keto, but this has been around as a therapy for epilepsy for a long time. What would you say to that person? That's, you know, it's, it's great. It's, um, and it goes to speak that the internet has been an incredible place. We actually did a study a few years ago where we asked parents, how did you find out about the diet? Mm -hmm. And almost all universally, it wasn't our book. You know, we thank you for mentioning our book, but most of the time it was the internet, websites, resources. Um, the Charlie Foundation is a great website. Matthew's Friends in England is a great website. Uh, Epilepsy.com. And so what we tell most parents is read about it. First step is, you know, do you think your child, you know, could even handle, you know, the high fat, low carb restrictions? Sometimes the answer is just an honest no for their family, for their child. But if they think they can do it, we'll sometimes suggest they even try like a few meals here and there. And if that goes well, absolutely in today's society, today's, you know, medical field, mention it to their doctor. Um, sometimes it's very appropriate. And we found when we also asked these parents, they'll often say their doctor was very supportive. Even if they didn't have a ketogenic center at their hospital, they will say, you know, for your child's epilepsy, if you think you can do it, I support you, go to a, a place that can do it. Um, but you know, you just have to just like anything, talk to your doctor, you know, email them, call them, and they'll be honest with you. And if, you know, perhaps you're in a scenario where you think, you think the child should do it, your, your own child should do it, but the doctor says no, Again, it may be medically correct, but you can always get another opinion. Um, we'll see certainly at Hopkins families who come to us who say, my doctor didn't think it was going to be helpful, and I may disagree. I say, you could at least give it a try, or yeah. uh, you know, we could agree with that, but it never hurts to get another opinion. It never hurts to reach out to your doctor. Absolutely. And, and we're talking about food too. So mm -hmm. it's, why, why not give it a give right. it a try? I mean, it's very challenging for some people for right. sure. lifestyle, culture, all these things play a role. But um, like you said, why not get, get a second opinion? I love that. Um, so for you, I mean, there, there's still a lot of work to be done, I feel like, when it comes to educating the public around the ketogenic diet. Uh, it's use with epilepsy, it's potential there. At, well, I mean, it's been around for 100 years. It's very much used in that space. But I still think there needs to be 
this gap that needs to be bridged for some people. And the science that's going on, not just with epilepsy, but cancer, Alzheimer's, all of these different other potential applications. For you, where do you hope to see the ketogenic diet metabolic therapies go? Where do you think you know, it might go in the next maybe five to 10 years? What's your goal and where yeah. do you see it? So, you know, people ask me that a lot. So what's, what's next? You know, we're, you know, we're approaching a century of use. Um, at least in the pediatric world that I work in, most hospitals have a center. They may not be very active, uh, but they still offer it. Um, it is really established as a medical treatment, and it's one, I wouldn't say mainstream, but it's pretty widely used in my field. I think what the future would really be exciting is, again, early, maybe even first-line use. Um, we know, you know a strong number, a strong list of these conditions where the epilepsy really responds to diet therapy. And as more doctors are aware of that, I think we and others, you're going to see more trials done where if the child is diagnosed very quickly, um, they come in, you're offering options, the diet could be one of those options. And it would really be great to see a clinical trial where maybe the diet is compared to the most appropriate drug in a large series and really see which one is better or are they equivalent, which would still be very important. Um, so that is really very exciting. Um, we're, again, using it a lot in infants. Uh, this was a population that for many years was not thought to be a good situation for the ketogenic diet, for growth and for side effects. Um, but now we're seeing almost the opposite, where more and more infants are felt to be the ideal population, maybe in the epilepsy world. Um, and so we're seeing more infants. We're definitely seeing more and more adults. Um, our adult epilepsy diet center at Hopkins is about twice as busy as my pediatric center. Wow. Pretty amazing um, how many adults out there are really desperate for options and you know, looking for something other than medicine. Yeah. Um, I'm very interested in, in developing countries. Um, how can we bring the diet to areas of the world, Africa, Southeast Asia, um, where medicines are unaffordable, medicines aren't available, um, but foods are? I mean, they may be more right. expensive. There's, there are barriers, don't get me wrong, Victoria, but... I think the diet could have a really interesting role in the next few decades in some parts of the country, some parts of the world, excuse me, um, where they really need epilepsy care. It right. might be changing their diet, maybe a real good option. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, that's great. I mean, I think that there's a real need there all over the world. And like you said, with kids, but also adults in really... Uh, allowing for people to know that this is just an option because there's still some people that I run into that, you know, have epilepsy that, that say, you know, I thought of trying this for weight loss. I had no idea I could use it to right. actually manage my seizures. Like that's crazy. <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, work and you're doing such a good job in getting that message out there and educating the public and, mm. and speaking about this. You're going to be speaking at metabolic health summit specifically. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what you're going to be covering at the conference in January? Yeah, so you know, I'm I'm going to speak about a lot of what we talked about, a lot of sort of what's new in the field of epilepsy, um, where the trials are heading, where the field of neurology is really heading, um, how does it work, what's the basic science behind it, um, what are the true indications for people who are in the field to know this child should get on the diet sooner, um, where you know we're trying to manage some of the side effects. It does have some adverse effects in kids and. Uh, most of the time they're preventable, most of the time they're manageable, but they're still extremely important to teach about. Um, and then again, as I mentioned, we'll talk about sort of where the future may be going for conditions in neurology beyond epilepsy um, and, you know, again, trying to get it around the world. So it'll be sort of a nice broad overview at the meeting. Um, it, it was fun for me, as I mentioned to you earlier, to come a few years ago. It'll be great to be back and update the audience on you know, what's changing, you know, year after year, it's incredible how things are changing. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's getting hard to keep up almost. And uh, it's just, it's an exciting time for those of us in the field. I 100%, uh, you know, agree. I mean, it's really, uh, I think, evolving. And it, there's such a responsibility there, too, to really provide people with the science behind this. And mm -hmm. where is this headed? And I mean, research is exploding all over the world right now with, with the ketogenic diet, which is very exciting. But uh, one of the most interesting areas uh, for me personally is uh, brain health and epilepsy. Yeah. And, and you look at 
how it can change people's lives. I mean, look at Jim, Jim Abrams' son, uh, what mm -hmm. happened with him. I mean, sometimes you get off the diet after doing it with uh, somebody who suffers from epilepsy and it doesn't come back, like seizures right. don't come back, which right. that's pretty incredible. So wow. I, I cannot wait for you to present at the Conference Metabolic Health Summit 2020. Yep. Uh, you were there when it was called the Conference on Nutritional Ketosis and Metabolic right. Therapeutics. Right. And right. you always just have such valuable information. And if you're an attendee or planning to come to Metabolic Health Summit, Dr. Eric Kossoff's um, presentation is not one that you will not want to miss. So thank you thank for you. participating in the conference this year. No, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, you can find more information. You can find Dr. Eric Kosoff's book um, for because it is Epilepsy Awareness Month. Is I know you mentioned a few uh, great resources: the Charlie Foundation, Matthews Friends. Anything else you would suggest people can do to help spread the word about metabolic therapies for epilepsy? Yeah, the, you know, it's a great question. There's uh, a lot of um, uh, the local epilepsy foundations in this month are doing public awareness events. They're doing local walks. They're doing charity events, raising money. Um, you know, epilepsy is one of those interesting conditions where you can look at someone and not know they have it. Mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of like privacy. A lot of people don't like to talk about their epilepsy. There's a lot of stigma behind it. And I think the Epilepsy Foundation is trying to change that. And sort of November and Epilepsy Awareness Month is one way to kind of shine the light on this condition, which is pretty common. One out of 26 uh, people in the world has epilepsy, but you wouldn't know it. And so, um, you know, it's, if you hear about an event, if you find out about a fundraiser in your area, you know, certainly great to participate if you can. Absolutely. No, well, thank you for everything you, all the time you spent today <laughs> in the interview. Sure. And then we are so excited to see you in January. If you're watching, go to metabolichealthsummit.com so you can hear Dr. Kosov speak live and really take a deep dive into this important topic. Yep. Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you guys soon.